How's it going, all you mentees? Uncanny Omar here from Near Me Condition with... The Astonishing Melanie. And together, we're going to give you an advanced look at the Spider-Man by Jeff Loeb and Tim Cell Gallery Edition. You forgot the word blue. There is no blue. Well, the letters aren't blue and everybody you, knows it's blue. We don't argue at the beginning <laughs> or the intro. Stay tuned. Thank you to David Gabriel and the other folks at Marvel for sending us this gorgeous gallery edition to review. This is um, scheduled to come out July 4th or 5th, depending on where you get your books, on both the direct and book markets. And speaking of direct and book market, what we're looking at here is the standard edition cover, of course, by the legendary and gone way too soon, Tim Sell. On the left-hand side is your direct market cover. It's also by Tim Sale, and you can see the differences. And again, the direct market cover will only be available through places like your local comic book store, CheapGraphicNovels.com, WaltzComicShop.com, DyingBreedCollectors.com, ComicsBugle.com, ReadsComics.com, Tales of Wonder, Organic Price Books, In Stock Trades, and places like that. So let's shift the focus back to this book. Now, the first thing that I thought was it's Spider-Man blue and it's not blue. <laughs> However, it is her hair. Her hair is blonde. Fun note that Tim Sale based the covers of all the issues on the um, art style of paperback novels back in the 60s. Oh, Pretty cool, huh? That is a fun note. You must have read the back of the book. I must have read the back matter. Mm -hmm. yeah, Let yeah. me throw some lingo around. But you will notice that Spider-Man logo is blue, and then you have Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale's name with the Marvel logo. There's the spine. That's Beautifully put. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff Loeb, Tim Cell, Spider-Man. A very simplistic spine. It is a uh, Spider-Man is in blue, though. And then, of course, the Marvel logo. This collects Spider-Man Blue, issues one through six. It's rated teen plus and retails for 50 bucks. And here is what the back looks like with a beautiful picture of Gwen Stacy and Mary Jane. Did you know... Oh boy. That Tim Sale was like, I cannot draw women as gorgeous as John Romita Sr. Oh, have you seen his Lois Lane and Superman Blue? I know this is a <laughs> Spider-Man book, but... Woo. No, it's in the back matter. We'll show you later. Okay. In order to do this advanced overview properly, we do have to talk about spoilers. So if you've not read it, do yourself a favor and read it. Don't, don't watch this video. Please like hit that like button, though. That would go a long way. But, yeah, we do have to talk about spoilers because we both really love this story and we want to talk about it. So, just in case, even putting us on mute, I don't think would work. So, do yourself a favor and read, especially if you're waiting for this beautiful gallery edition. And then afterwards, you're welcome to come back because we are going to give our thoughts about this story. Uh, so, just in case, minor... No. So, just in case, spoilers. All right. Let's go ahead and crack it open. Astonishing Melanie. Okay, let's go ahead and get this opened. Very dramatic end sheets. Yes, and here is the Spider-Man blue picture right there. All these covers are just amazing. The storytellers. I love that they are both yes, credited isn't as that cool? storytellers. Because I think when you're working together on a graphic novel, that's, that's the way it should be. But it's Jeff Loeb and Tim Sell. Here's your lettering by, of course, Richard Starking and Comics Crafts. Wes Abbott, and then Steve Busolato doing the colors. Here we have a new introduction by Jeff Loeb, talking about the artistic style of Tim Cell and how he had to change it for this, because it doesn't draw heavily on those shadows like we're used to seeing, especially when both of them working together in the Dark Knight stories, Batman Long Halloween. And, um, yeah. So, when, um, Gwen, we love you. Timmy, we miss you. Jeff Loeb. So this is a really interesting story because it's it's a bit of a retcon in the way that this miniseries worked. It started in 2002 and went all the way to 2003 and was six issues. But it doesn't take place in 2002 to 2003. It takes place during the Stan Lee and John Romita Sr. era. So it's issues, I think it's 40 to 48 and then later on issue 67. And what I mean by a little bit of a retcon is that... These villains did attack Spider-Man during those issues, 
but there wasn't anybody really pulling the strings behind the scenes. In this, you find out who was pulling the strings. And like I said, we are going to be talking a little bit about spoilers. So look at that image. Mm hmm. And again, Actually, I was zoning out and looking at it instead of listening, listening to, to me. You. Of course, you're zoning out. Uh, the it is framed again because we uh, we talked a little bit about this when doing the overview. Was it of wedding album or one more day? Where the go, I'm sorry. Go ahead. This reminds me of Cowboy Bebop, and it even says my funny Valentine, the name of one of the episodes. Look at that. My love Which wait. Birds uh, sting. uh Cowboy Bebop was what, 97, I think, right? So maybe, maybe he was watching an episode of Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but then again, it could be pure coincidence. So Spider Man does get to fight a lot of his classic villains through here, like Green Goblin and Rhino. And this is what the art looks like. To kind of give you a little bit of a comparison, though, this is one of my favorite panels, and it kind of. It's really cartoony with the exaggerated features, right, compared to the rest of um, his artwork. Uh, so I just found it interesting that that is one of my favorite panels when it's a little bit different from all the rest. But, man, I love this one, too. Okay. So. Um, I'll be your Vanna White. You can tell. Give us the pitch. What is Spider-Man Blue about? Spider-Man Blue is a story framed by Peter Parker um, recording his thoughts and talking to... Gwen Stacy, his dead love. Um, so anytime we have a blue narration, narrate, whoa, narrative, narration box. It's not actually Melanie talking pretty one day. I couldn't decide between the two and it went weird. Um, it, that's him talking to Gwen through the recorder. So sometimes it's saying like whir or click because, um, yeah, he's recording himself. Man, look how much that yellow pops against all this blue. And then all of a sudden it's like, pull it out. There's Gwen Stacy. So, he has defeated the Green Goblin, who conveniently um, does not remember that Spider-Man is Peter Parker, and because he's keeping an eye on Harry, uh, Harry, um, Norman Osborn, that he becomes friends with his son, Harry, who is in this group with Gwen and Flash, who's always giving him trouble. And, um, what, let's say, let's say you're not familiar with spider-man's history mm -hmm. what you can gather from uh this story about gwen stacy's character is that she's really smart she um she's nice um but that's basically it and you can gather a little bit about peter parker too like the way that he is oh right definitely so what what i'm saying is with my reread through this, I was like, I wanted more Gwen Stacy. She's such a focal point. The love of his life that died. And I didn't grow up reading about Gwen Stacy, though. I grew up reading 80s and 90s comics with Mary Jane. So I get, I know enough about her, right? That this, I mean, I, I even feel like this story focuses more on her and her being a brat. <laughs> and having to be the... the um, life of the party now uh, by the way if you ask me gwen or mj mj that's who i grew up reading mj but anyway yeah she's a brat in this story uh, i think you're yeah you're not supposed to really like her no. right immediately mm -hmm. and no. just because you're seeing it through the eyes of peter parker and the way that he's remembering these stories mm -hmm. so yes if, if you're not familiar with the character of gwen stacy or what happened to her um I, I don't know. Rereading this makes me think you you really don't need to. You may want to find out exactly what happens because it's not shown through these pages. That doesn't happen until much later in these flashbacks. Right. Well, what I'm talking about is he's so head over heels in love with her still, years and years later. But yeah. through the story, you don't get to really know who she is, and that's what I wanted. Mm. But uh, look at that. Yeah, there's a wait, lot wait. of spread <laughs> pages. <laughs> what I said was what was emphasized in the word bubble. Who is what that? a great, what a great spread page. Woo. Oh, uh, well, I don't know. Lois Lane's all right. Now. Oh, and this <laughs> is multiple times. Uh, it, this uh, Peter has this facial expression on his face. How did this guy get so lucky? He's got these yeah, two what, chicks all Flash over him. That's what he's saying. I mean, multiple times. And then Harry's like, get he's it. an okay guy. I don't get it. That's what wait, it wait. But this, she says here... What you know about Peter Parker uh, couldn't, couldn't fill a thimble. thimble. I still don't what get you know, it. Uh, yeah, like there's Just so much more to him, and 
and these women are seeing it, but he doesn't know what to do. He's in love with Gwen, but gee, MJ sure is cute. Oh, man, that dilemma. Look at these beautiful <laughs> spreads, this. man. This, I mean... Man, this, this story being told right here is awesome. And then if you flip the page that... Um, Tim Sale wanted to put Aunt May on one of the covers. Fought for it. Jeff Loeb didn't want it. And I don't remember who they went to. But the guy was like, No! Don't put Aunt May on a cover! <laughs> Poor Aunt May. <laughs> she gets she gets no love. She's no Marissa Tomei or Ultimate Aunt May. Um, in here, this is also in continuity when he was sick fighting some of these characters after these long fights. This is when the Vulture's costume gets... Adopted by someone else other than the original Vol. Oh my the, gosh. This is the one that he drew instead of it's, Aunt May being instead on the cover. Of it, I, think <laughs> I'm, I think I'm happy with that one. That was a good choice. All right. So as the Uncanny Omar mentioned in the uh, beginning that there's somebody in the shadows pulling the strings with all of these villains who happen to be animal related. Wink, wink. Nudge, That's nudge. Right. Know what I mean? Know what I mean? Um... There's this face. Yeah, there it is again. I don't, I don't think I noticed until you pointed it out. Wow, and she's like, you don't know what you're saying. You didn't mean to say wow. You're sick. And he was like, no, I meant wow. Uh, they're fighting over who takes care of him. What the heck? They don't and even then, know he's Spider Man. He's like, oh, there's Vulture out there. Rats of frass of Vulture. He looks so cute. So, oh, oh, and, and this right here is from a poster done for France where the Eiffel Tower is in the background. They took it out, mm -hmm. put some snow in, because they needed an extra page for the collection. And I thought, I didn't know that until I read the Not this collection, back. but when it was collected in trade paperback format, because yep. back then, to have spread pages like this, sometimes you would have, like, it was this page, right? So you couldn't have this as yeah, a spread yeah. page. So you would have to have a blank page. So sometimes so they would works, put extra but... art in. It, it, it did seem awkward. Like, I didn't know uh, while I was reading it until I read the end that that's what they did. I was just kind of like, huh, that was a little weird. So, in the end, we find out that it's been Craven the Hunter. Man, and, the but, but it looks like Vulture's, like, feather jacket ruffle you, thing you, until... You forgot? It gets... To, not, oh, yes, I forgot. Oh, okay. Who are you talking to? I forget everything. So, um... It's not until here that I'm like, oh, it's Craven because of the shape of this. Before it looked like the vultures, like, fur. And I was like, what? That Hubba. doesn't make any sense. Hubba. My goodness, Gwen. Woo. Uh, yes, Craven the Hunter. Look at that Craven the Hunter face. Yeah, this was such a fun story. Just going back and. Uh, and revisiting. this is where Flash is joining the army because he wants to help people, like Spider Man helps people. Even though he can't stand Peter Parker. But it's a six-issue story. And then we find out, you know, the whole... Not really the twist, but you find out that he's been talking to a tape recorder. Yeah, no, you knew at the beginning you're talking to a tape recorder. But that Mary Jane was listening. And I always thought this was, like, this, this is one of the most beautiful moments in comics. And it kind of, you know, in one panel summarizes how much she loves her husband right like she's telling him her husband who is mourning over the woman that he loved that was before her to tell gwen i said hi and i miss her too that always gets me that's so beautiful i love it look at oh my gosh how many nights does he sit there and record and i wonder if he uses his phone now it's weird to think about this story because not yet yeah, tape recorders, like if people use them. And then, of course, the behind the scenes. That's an awesome image. The burglar. It's from... That, that precedes this story, though. That's from 1998, just a pinup. So here is John Romita Sr.'s artwork from the original story. And then you have Tim And then Tim that Stowe's classic... Um, you hit the jackpot? Yes, the classic panel with uh, the introduction of Mary Jane. And, and here's the Eiffel Tower picture. Sketch galleries. That's why I liked it so much. It looks like, it reminds me of Tim Burton. That's why I like it. 
Reminds me of the Joker smile from Long Halloween. And that's it. Spider Man's got a booty in this one. <laughs> yes, he does. All right, let's talk about the build of the book and, you know, how we really feel about this story. It has sewn binding and 168 pages. Printed at the iMac printer. So this is the way it lays over. And you could probably tell how it lays over when we have a bunch of spread pages. Let's actually go to one. And there are a lot of spread pages. So this is the way it lays over towards the front right here. You have a little bit of gutter loss. Not really a lot. You want to compare? I do want to compare. Thank you. Thank you. So I've owned this in many different versions for some reason i never picked up the omnibus because i thought one day they'll come up with some kind of edition like this and then the omnibus went out of print so the paper stock they're using is this thick glossy paper very similar to the previous gallery editions and the color here let's actually look at the greens here they're a little bit darker mm -hmm. in previous versions so that this is a cleaner newer scan that they're using here so you can see like the green is a little bit yellowish compared to the green over here and of course the green goblin looking a little lighter green than over here these colors and comparing it over here to which do you like better i don't think i have any. it's opinion. really difficult because i have read this this particular trade paperback because i can't find this the hardcover that i have um i don't know 10 15 times I don't, I don't know so this is the way that i remember it but i also never picked it up in single issues so i don't know if this is kind of truer to the single issues than this i want to say that with the restoration and everything that they're putting into these books that this is probably closer to that of the single issues than this over here but that's how much bigger your artwork looks, your frames right here. I don't have the omnibus to compare it to, but it is bigger than the omnibus format. So rereading it again, how do you feel about the story? Where does it, where does it stand in the hierarchy of Spider-Man stories for you? I liked it. I liked how it was nostalgic and um, just it, it felt old. It felt timeless, right? On the second run through, though. I really wanted more Gwen Stacy, and I get it. It's a six-issue series. Like, you can't put that much into it. Um, it. It's terrific the way it is. It was just, I... He was pining so much for her that I wanted her in it more. Mm. I, I, can I would have that. loved her read ten, ten issues of I it. Mean, I think whenever I describe this story to people, I think that's what they expect, too. They're like, oh, it's a flashback to the love story of Spider-Man and Gwen Stacy. No, it's a lot more. But it's so much more than that. Yeah, there's a lot of that in here. It's, But it's also the, the, the beginning of that love. It's not like the tail end of the love, like where she got killed by the Green Goblin. That didn't happen until years later. Uh, this is still one of my favorite Spider-Man stories. It, it brings me to tears. And it makes me appreciate Mary Jane so much more. Because I'm a Mary Jane guy too. So it just kind of solidifies that love that I have for her as well. It's just what kind of woman she is. So it's a good thing we didn't do one more day right before we did this one, huh? Oh, wait, <laughs> wait. Where is it? All right. <laughs> Here we go. Speak of one more day. Peter says, I never, ever thought I would be burying you, uh, talking about Gwen, talking to Gwen, before her, Aunt May. It's just not the way life is supposed to work. Mephesto, Mary Jane, Peter, in that story. That's not how it's supposed to work. All right. Um, there is a tiny little bit of bleed through coming from the, not, it's not very noticeable, so you get to some really light pages like here. Yeah. There's a little bit of bleed through coming from the opposite pages whenever it's light or it's, there's a lot of white. Those are windows in the picture. Those yes, aren't the bleed through. Those, I was talking about the shades right here, for example, that you can see from the opposite page that aren't even shades. It's the grill of the car. Uh, I'm trying to make out pictures here. So there's just a little bit of that. Not, not a lot. 
especially for a book that uses a lot of lights like you can make out maybe a frame i think that's a frame it looks like a frame or it could be a building or both i don't know but that's it that as they say is that if you're interested in purchasing this book, please check out our sponsors, links in the description. If you're in Europe and you're interested in buying these books, definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices, flat shipping rate of 12 euros for all EU countries, emails answer within 24 hours, waltzcomicshop.com, and you can use the code near mint condition at checkout and get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order over 40 euros. That's Walt's Comic Shop, your reliable source for omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Ding! CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with a kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this gallery edition. So let us know in the comments down below if you are picking this up, if you're picking up the rest of the Jeff Loeb and Tim Sell books in gallery editions. What other gallery editions would you like to see of your favorite Marvel stories? Or Spider-Man. Just stick to Spider-Man. I want to know what people want to see. Craven's Last Hunt. Oh, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, Trouble. Nope. No, that nope, wouldn't nope. be good. I still haven't read it, though. Oh, no, yeah. I, I should I should keep my mouth shut until I read the thing. What if you love it? Anyway, <laughs> everyone stay healthy and safe out there. Much love. Stay minty.